interesting, right? <laughs> okay, quite, quite, quite stand up. Put it away. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. So, welcome. And we are here to talk about gap year opportunities. Um, you have the handout which talks about a lot of the advantages to doing a gap year. We're just trying to get people to think about this. It's a growing trend. Um, last year we had three students from North Andover High School that graduated and are doing a gap year right now. Um, I'm Kim Reardon and my son Sean Reardon is one of the students. Um, he is studying in Hungary this year, uh, doing another senior year of high school, but in Europe. And he uh, is living with a host family and going to school there. And he does not need the credits. He's not earning any credits towards high school or college. Um, he does need to maintain a certain GPA just to be a good representative of the program. But he is having that cultural immersion experience. Um, he did apply to college already. And this is one of the things that they talk about, um, that you go ahead with your classmates and you do still apply to colleges as you would normally. And, but then you defer, and most colleges are very happy to have you because they know when you come back you're going to be more mature, uh, more confident, you have that much more self-awareness, um, and they have shown that the students that do that year, that take that year off between high school and college tend to be more motivated when they do go to college. Um, we actually have several people here that are, um, have either done gap years themselves or in the midst of it. And then we have Bob Ford, who is our youth exchange officer for the Rotary Club, who lives here in North Andover and runs the program here in North Andover, uh, both for incoming students and uh, the students that are interested in studying abroad. We have Julian Lathrop, who graduated North Andover High School last year. He is doing a gap year and a little uh, different from Rotary, but still structured. Um, and that's the key. It needs to be structured and planned out ahead of time. Um, we have Maura Daly, who did a study abroad year with Rotary in Ecuador, and she'll talk a little bit about that. We have Quentin Baptiste from France and Adriana Castaneda from Peru. They are both here in the United States doing their, uh, well, Adriana's doing a gap year, so she already graduated high school. Um, so she's studying here at North Andover High School, and um, Quentin is doing a study abroad program, so he's still uh, a sophomore, uh, and will go back to high school when he goes back to France. Um, and then we have Natalie Bardfay, who did uh, a short-term program, so if you're not quite ready maybe to make the commitment to a whole year away, Rotary does offer short-term programs. So I'll turn it over to Bob. All right. Hi. Um, and again, is Bob Ford. I am the uh, I'm a member of the North Andover Rotary Club. I oversee the Rotary uh, Youth Exchange Program here in North Andover. I also work on the um, on the district level, which is our district in, in Rotary is Northeastern Massachusetts. Uh, and we send students out on exchange. We bring students in, and you know, as Kim has said, um, the experience is without comparison. Um, and, and we'll let each of the students who are in it or have already done it and completed it uh, talk about their, you know, their individual experiences a little bit. Um, but it, it's an opportunity to stop and reflect. It's an opportunity to learn, to grow in so many different ways. Um, I mean, just consider it is a, a huge step to decide to leave home, not just to go away to college somewhere in the U.S., but to go to another country, another culture, another language, and totally immerse yourself. A student lives with two, three, maybe even four host families. They attend the local high school, a, a total immersion program. Um, they have to find you know, their way. They have to find, you know, they have a lot of support, first of all, certainly from host families, from the local Rotary Club and the Rotary District are all there to assist the student. We prepare students before they go out on exchange. Uh, we conduct three orientation programs in, in preparing our students before we send them out. So we start a whole year before the student even goes out on exchange. Applications are due the beginning of November to go out the following August. Um, our group of students going out from our district that we have preparing, that we are preparing now, um, they've just, we just yesterday had their first orientation program. 
Um, and so we have two more to be conducted. And so they're learning now about the country that they're going to be going to. They, they've we've gotten confirmation as to what country they're, they will be, uh, that will be hosting them. Um, and so it's, first of all, preparation that we do, and then we provide the support while the student is away. Um, the, the learning opportunity, obviously, just to learn about another culture, another country, to have awareness, to just travel, to, to travel on, essentially on your own. You're not accompanied by parents or other family member. Um, again, there are other exchange students. There are, you know, there is the support system of Rotary and the host families, the, the school that the student is attending. But each individual still has to make that effort interact with the host family, interact with students in school, make friends, and do it in another language. Um, so there's, there's a big challenge, but there's also a big reward uh, at the end. So uh, it is something that we do encourage. Rotary has been conducting this program for over 80 years. Uh, we have a lot of experience doing it. Um, this is supported by the, um, you know, by the U.S. State Department, which regulates our program. And um, so, you know, we do it. We have also not just the long-term program, which goes for an entire school year, but we also have a short-term program, which Natalie can, can speak about. Uh, she participated in that program. We've had a couple of students who've actually participated in both the short-term as well as the long-term program. A couple of North Andover students and other students from our, from our district have done that. Um, so it is, a, it really is a fantastic program. Um, you, we, Rotary, first of all, let me just say, to distinguish, there are a lot of programs, uh, exchange programs that are out there. Um, so there is a lot of competition, if you will, with Rotary. But one difference that we have that sets us apart from most, if not all, of those other programs is, is that we're an organization of volunteers. We're a civic organization. We do this. I don't get paid one dime for the work that I do, for the time that I put in. Uh, and I put in a lot of time uh, to help run this program. Uh, I do it because I believe in it. Uh, there are other programs where host families will get paid, a school will get paid, and I'm not putting those down, but they're very different. Their orientation is different. Some of those programs will only take in students, and they don't send out students. We, we do both. Okay? Uh, and Rotary, no matter where, whether it's in the U.S. Or, or any other country, they're all volunteers, and they're doing it because they believe in it. Um, we have a very lofty goal of you know, peace through understanding, um, and that's what we do, one student at a time, to just make that contact, be a good ambassador of the U.S., be a good ambassador of Rotary, and good ambassador of their families, and make friends, make those contacts. We'll hear about, I don't want to be stealing their thunder, uh, telling you about you know, what they have gained from their experience. So that having been said, Adriana. What? Okay. <laughs> um. So I'm here from Peru. I'm studying here in Randover High School. I am a senior. Um, I already graduated from Peru, uh, so I'm doing like a gap year. Uh, I already accepted to, to college. I know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't get credits, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I get like to know a lot of people from all around the world. Um, I get to know like a lot of people and get to know, like, how to speak a new language, too. Um, what else? You're trying new things. New things. I I hear call a uh, color guard. It was my first time with a flag, um, but it was fun. Like, try. Um, I I'm doing Carlos. I'm doing the new play. Um, so it's a fabulous experience. This is my second time, actually. I went like two years ago to France when I was a sophomore. I spent a year in France. Um, it was a great experience too, different. Um, but now I'm here, <laughs> uh, so it's great. It's great. Um, I don't know what. So, uh, well, I come from France. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm only a sophomore, uh, but pretty much the same thing. Except I'm not doing a gap year because I'm going to come back to high school after. Though I don't get credits for my year here. So, but I still discover a lot of things and I'm learning a lot of things. Different opinion on the same facts. Um, I, yeah, I'm meeting a lot of new people too and that's, I think, the most inter inter interesting part. And also the language, which is pretty important to know I speak English now. It's gonna be a great thing for me later. 
and I'm taking a year to think about what I could do later because I have pretty much no idea. But yeah, I I learn and I grow up here, and it's kind of different experience than in France. But I really love it. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Maura Daly, and I was in Ecuador nine years ago. Um, and yeah, I was telling them it's just amazing to kind of relive my experience after listening to them and thinking about the application process and what it was like to leave and meeting new people. And I, it's still something I think about every single day. Um, and I still have friends from there. I'm still in touch with the families. Um, and what I with the friends that you make there, it's just you develop this connection with these people that nobody else in the world has, and it's built on support and being there for each other, and um, there are certainly ups and there's certainly downs, and it's how you persevere through them, and I think especially at this age, it's a really important quality to learn, um, and it gets you ready for other challenges in life, and those other challenges might not seem so big anymore because you you spent a year in another country, and then you can walk into college and be like, okay, well, I can do this pretty easily. So, yeah, it's just so highly recommended, and I personally didn't feel a need to rush off to college, and I'm so glad I didn't. Um, and, yeah, it's definitely built who I am today, for sure. And I think continuing with that thought, Maura, so we have Julian, who, um, as I mentioned before, you kind of created your own experience, yeah. and can you just talk a little bit about that, yeah. that experience yeah, yeah, yeah. and how you were feeling before it? Yeah, okay, so um, in college, in high school, I was very kind of blasé, and I wasn't really enjoying going to school. I was just kind of in the class because that was what my schedule said, and I did my homework because it was assigned, and I went to school the next day because it was Tuesday, and it, it wasn't really what I was enjoying, and um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I uh, kind of wanted to take a break from all of it, and um, now I've been, my, my gap year is less structured than the Rotary Exchange and Immersion. Um, I'm taking a road trip with my friend, uh, Connor, and we are driving around um, the U.S. to all of the national parks and national forests and um, trying to hit as many incredible locations as we can. and. Um, I am now three months into it. We've come home for uh, the holidays, and I'm already so much more ready to learn. And whenever I get to a new place, I try to learn as much as I can about that location and its history and the people who used to live there and the people who live there now and the culture and everything. And I really love being able to absorb that much information and feel that interest again that I hadn't had in a while. And um, I'm excited to go to college now uh, kind of like being prepared for it. It doesn't seem like that big of a jump anymore, that big of a challenge, and I'm going to enjoy learning there a lot more. <laughs> well, and I think in fairness to you too, it required a lot of planning and budgeting. Mm -hmm. So there was the, the lessons learned even just building up to your years, planning out yeah, the, yeah. the budget and, yeah. and mapping mm -hmm. out. Um, one of the fears I know the parents have is, oh, my kid's getting off track and you've had this plan and you want your kid to go to college right after high school because you're afraid they're going to lose their momentum. Um, I think what Julian just said speaks volumes about by taking that year off, you're almost getting more bang for your college buck when they go back to school because they're more motivated and more mature. Um, I can say that in my son's case, um, he did already plan, you know, he's already planning on going to Ithaca College um, and that's all in place. Um, and he knew he wanted to do film, and he was thinking, combine that with political science. Now that he's been um, in Hungary, and he's had a couple experiences over there, um, he has already said that he wants to do um, documentary studies and inter international relations. So even just being over there and kind of having these other life experiences, it's kind of opened him up to more possibilities. I think he didn't think outside this certain box, and now he's seeing what's out there. And um, some, I, I know a lot of colleges are offering study abroad semesters, so you can enroll in a college and then you can um, study abroad with their program. What I will tell you though is that you're still paying the college tuition when you do that. So pick a college that you're looking at and you know, you know what the tuition is. So you're gonna be paying that tuition for your child to, to study abroad. 
Um, if I can just interject, mm -hmm. plus you're also going to be paying for the trip abroad. Right. So, <laughs> so it's it's in addition. So right. the way we looked at it is, well, let's do the study abroad portion first. And I, I did a quick calculation. Um, and again, this is specific because uh, for Hungary, but for my son to go to Hungary, uh, we had to buy the plane ticket and uh, health insurance. There were nominal administration fees. Um, he did. He did, is required to attend a foreign language camp. Um, some of the programs, like I know Quentin and Adriana coming here, they are required to go on trips to New York City and Washington D.C. as they should. But so that there are some things that the, the specific country will require you to do. However, um, I think when it's all said and done, uh, we will have spent about six or seven thousand dollars for the year. Okay, we are choosing to add on another. Uh, trip so our son can do a, a Europe tour, a tour of Europe, but he doesn't have to. That that was our choice. But um, so we're not paying college tuition yet. We're just paying for the rotary year. If you Google gap years, and you can, you just go on the internet. You can Google gap year. Um, easily, you'll spend thirty thousand dollars for some of these programs. Fabulous programs, I'm sure. What I'm saying, I think what Bob's saying is that um, you get a good quality program with Rotary. Uh, Rotary is all over the world, and it's like, or, you know, if you know Rotary, it's, it's groups of professionals, and they are very careful to um, screen applicants and host families, and it, everything is really well um, vetted before you go. Um, but like I said, you can do something like what Julian did. Um, it's kind of what you want to make of it, but I would highly encourage, and if you read the article, it tells you, make sure it is structured and well planned out. Um, and what I was saying to the last group is that um, you're kind of doing the application at the same time you're doing college applications. So a lot of the information, and even the stuff you're writing in your essays, you can kind of use a lot of the same things, so you kind of get into that zone and, and you're writing about it. Um, so, I don't know if you have any questions for any of us so far. Anything jumping out as we're talking? <laughs> no, I didn't know this was focused around Rotary, but uh, you know we have been thinking about potential gap year, like AmeriCorps, and you know yep. literally have just started looking. So and that's great too because right. you're doing service. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch of really cool programs that'll offer you really cool. There's a. Uh, Knowles and like outdoor leadership opportunities and then um, there, there are a bunch of less structured but still very productive things that you can do like the road trip that I'm taking and the man behind the camera uh, has been taking uh, a semester off from his, he's going to go to UMass and uh, before he goes there he's been working and doing umpteen jobs and just kind of helping out with his family and I think uh, the, the, great, the greater point that we have is taking any time off to do anything that's going to enrich your life, especially before you go to college, is, uh, is going to make a difference and it's going to make you a cooler person. <laughs> yeah. And one thing to consider is, I mean, in the gap year, I'm not, you know, maybe just preaching to the choir <laughs> here if you're pretty much set on the gap year, uh, is stop and think as life goes on, when are you going to have the opportunity again? To do this. This is the ideal time. You're finishing high school, you know, finish high school, deferring college for a year, it's an ideal time. You're young enough, you're, you're ready to bring in, you've got a lot of knowledge in your head already, and now you can see the world and, you know, apply some of that knowledge and be able to see how that knowledge is to be applied, plus acquiring more, you know, more understanding of what's going on. Whether you, you know, AmeriCorps, a lot of wonderful programs out there, there are also some other programs that aren't so wonderful, whether they're exchange programs or service programs. You know, that obviously you have to check that out very, very carefully. Uh, and that's why I did make the point earlier, we are you know, a, a well-known international organization. We've been doing this for many, many uh, years, for decades. Um, and we have many people who are involved. It isn't, you know, it's not just me. We have a Rotary Club that stands behind me. Um, I, I'm, Adriana's youth exchange officer for the Rotary Club. She also has uh, Diane Hinckley, who is her Rotary counselor, plus, as I said, just the whole Rotary Club. And then we have the district people as well. Northeastern Massachusetts is our district, and so we have those people who are overseeing the entire program within the district. 
Um, so just check that out, whatever the program is, to make sure that there's going to be the support system. The student is still going to have a lot of opportunity to do things independently, be self-reliant, have to count on themselves to accomplish different things, um, but you know, have that support system. That's why Kim has been mentioning, you know, make sure it's well structured. Right. Okay. The other thing is, so if you're going to, you might be considering a mirror course or something else, uh, there are shorter term programs, so like uh, two summers ago my son did um, a month during the summer with the Student Conservation Association, same thing. Uh, very reasonable. All he had to pay for was his airplane ticket. Um, and then they camped out, but they did uh, trail maintenance for a month down in, uh, just north of Atlanta. Fabulous experience. Uh, but he chose to do a month, but you can do longer. And if you're willing to go off peak, so like most kids want to do it in the summers, uh, but if you were taking a year off and you're available other times, you could get a plum assignment maybe in one of the national um, state parks, you know. So definitely do your research, you know, think about what you'd like to do. What a lot of kids do is they work for the first part of their gap years because you've got to save the money to do what it is that you want to do. That's life experience too. <laughs> Have a goal, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you go off and do the thing. Just I would say start doing your research now, look at deadlines and, and really pay attention um, to, to those details. Natalie did a short term uh, to, to go ahead, Natalie, you talk about it. Well, I um, also was in the, uh, I was participating in another branch of the Rotary Exchange program. So I was also going abroad, so maybe that's not what you're interested in, too. Um, but I went during the summer. And so if you're not ready to take um, a big step and maybe commit a full year, there's still a lot of programs that you can do and you can plan for in advance where you'll get a lot of the same experience. And so I went to Sevilla, Spain and I spent a little more than a month there. And then the student who I was living with and her family, she came and lived with me. And that um, the smaller and more compact experience was still just as meaningful as the full year. And so there's, um, you know, you don't have to, if you're scared by the prospect of a year, you know, and you, maybe you're very focused and planned, like you don't have to make that choice, but you can make other choices that will give you a lot of um, similar experiences. Uh, one, um, one other point that I'd like to just point out um, is one way of learning. Now, are you a, a junior now? You're a junior, okay, now sophomore, all right. Um, that if you are at all interested, or even if you're not, whatever, I'll just toss out something that if you might uh, want to broaden your horizons, even just right here at home, um, as I've been saying, we bring foreign exchange students into our country, into our Rotary District, and into North Andover. And so we need to find host families. And we have generally what we look for is three host families to break it up for the year, and that's just to make not too much of a burden on any host family, and also to give the student, you know, just a wider variety of, you know, of experience. So um, hosting a student who is here, a foreign student who is here, gives the family and the student, the North End of a student, the opportunity to observe what is this foreign student doing? Because if I do go away on exchange, this is what I'm going to be dealing with, okay, in, in a, my own host country, wherever I go. So it's something to, you know, to think about, and I'm constantly looking for students to go out on exchange, and of course when I send a student out, I have to bring a student in as well. So there is that opportunity. What got you thinking about doing a study abroad or a gap year? Um, he hasn't been, I'm yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it usually works. <laughs> but you're at least yeah. open to yeah. thinking about it. Well, so, just, you know, just as an option. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Could I ask, how old will you be when you graduate from high school? Uh, 17. You'll be 17 yes. still? That wow. was your situation. Then, okay. gap, then yeah. gap year. Is I mean then whatever it is whatever it is and of course I'm from Rotary and of course that's the best program, <laughs> uh, but um, so 17 is great. I mean that that's Jillian he's spoken about that that you know you're not ready. I was 17 when I graduated from high school. I wish I had known about this and had had this opportunity. I'm going off to college. I was still a kid. I was still a kid, um, and and that makes a difference and that's hard to shake. I will say at least from my own experience. Uh, it was hard for me to get into the college scene because I was still so young. I was younger than most every other kid, um, you know, starting out. So that does make a difference. 
Uh, plus also, being that age, you're still eligible to do a rotary gap year. Uh, because we do hit, when we hit 18 and a half, that's the maximum age that a student can go out with. There are a couple of countries maybe that are exceptions, but to have the broadest choice of, of countries uh, to go to, um, better to be, you know, under 18 and a half. Um, so that is something, you know, that you could consider, you know, doing. It's not, it's not only a year to uh, think about what you're going to do later, it's a year where you can learn a new language and we're going to meet a lot of new people, awesome people most of the time. And um, you're going to be fluent in your language, that is very cool. Your school will probably love if you speak perfectly like Spanish or French. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, promo of my country, of course. Uh, yeah, so it's not only making a pose or making a pose, it's making a pose, but you're going to discover so much new things. It's cool. And you get the opportunity to get up and speak publicly and, you know, <laughs> those characters. Years later, too. <laughs> yeah, years later. <laughs> We're still working at it. One of the things, and I can't remember if we mentioned this already, um, we always, we were hemming and hawing about, well, do we have our son do the exchange year first because then that looks good on the college application? But uh, the head of guidance here recommended that we just go ahead and, and apply. And I think that was wise advice. So as much yeah. as you'd like to be able to say, yeah, but look what I'm doing, I, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. And um, I think we were saying this in the last session. Um, some kids do change their mind during the gap year, which is not a bad thing. Kind of better for it to happen than <laughs> instead of going in and then realizing this isn't the right choice, this isn't the right fit, and then transferring. Not to say that you're not going to transfer, but it just gives that little breather room to kind of self-discover and maybe, you know, give, give the student a little chance to figure out, yeah, you know, I know I don't like this now, like I've kind of figured that out, but I'm kind of interested in this path. So that's another, it's a little more food for thought, but in terms of practicality of when do I apply and how, you know, the logistics and the sequence, um, I would just go ahead and, and keep doing the, the college application process, be, but be doing this concurrently. Also, the, the process of deferring. Good evening. It is now time to move to your next information session. Um, Thank you. If, you. if you do choose to take a gap year, the process of deferring is miraculously easy, and it, it doesn't add any stress. It was, for me, a phone call and an email that was just kind of like, boom, I'm going to go to school next year instead of this year. And they held my scholarship, and they held admission to separate programs that I had gotten into, and it was super easy. And that was like just kind of the cherry on top of like I'm doing it. I'm going on a gap year, and that was like super easy to do. Yeah. I hope that helped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for Thank coming. You. <laughs> and do it. Yeah. And do it. And do it. it. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks for being about that.